pulmonary atresia with uh, VSD and major aortopulmonary collaterals. Pulmonary atresia with ventricular septal defects and major aortopulmonary collaterals is a congenital heart disease typified with a vast spectrum of physiologic and morphologic variants. As a whole, these defects represent about 1% of congenital heart defect. The major variability occurs with the anatomy and adequacy of the pulmonary vascular blood flow. The disorder has reported incidence of 0.7% per 10,000 live birth. In general, the association of intracardiac anatomy is that of the large non-restrictive outflow or coronal VSD and valvular pulmonary atresia. Whether there is a uh, coronal musculature between the mitral valve and the aortic valve is used to describe the in effect as tetralogy of fellow like or simply one of the outflow VSD, the TOF with PA and major aortopulmonary collaterals accounts for 20% of all TOFs and as one might suspect these uh, cases tend to have the worst prognosis of all form of tetralogy of fellows. Deception of the forming vessels occurs early in life and when the normal connection between the heart and pulmonary arteries is disrupted, the blood supply to the lung is maintained by the PDA or systemic pulmonary collaterals. After the evaluation of birth, prostaglandin, catheterization and chest CT scan should be done. This is associated with atresia of the pulmonary valve and tetralogy like uh, conoventricular VSD and pulmonary collateral vessels that originate from the uh, descending thoracic aorta most frequently, but at times aortic arch ductus ascending aorta with no cardiac origin or pulmonary blood flow due to ecteric pulmonary valve. Newborns rely on the collateral flow from the aorta and its branches. The pulmonary artery beds may be characterized by hyperplastic or even completely absent true pulmonary arteries. Major aortopulmonary collaterals therefore represent the congenital systemic to pulmonary collateral arteries which supply the lung segments with the systemic flow. If the ductus arteriosus is present, the confluent true PAs may develop into additional or any collateral pulmonary circulation. These collaterals um, vary widely in origin, course, size, and appearance. Any given lung segment may drive its blood supply from the true PA system, aortic origin of the MAPCS or other collateral circulations, including the rare instances of the splanchnic vessels. In addition to the unpredictable arb arborization pattern, lung segment may receive the branches uh, excessive or insufficient flow. And the natural course of the untreated MAPCS often follows a progressively worsening stenosis occlusion and underdevelopment. A VSD is often identified in the anterior malaligned position, hence given the frequent classification of retrology of fellow with PA, although the ventricles are usually normal in size and rarely they may under uh, development of one or other ventricles. And many patients with the PA and VSD often have associated cardiac abnormalities such as secondum atrial septal defect, coronary anomalies, additional VSD. Furthermore, a significant portion of the patient will have other association syndrome for extra cardiac findings such as vector syndrome, algile syndrome, digoge or trisomy 21. And in some cases, there may be tracheobronchial anomalies as well. The manifestations of the disease often vary like congenital disease dependent on the clinical adequacy of the pulmonary blood flow. Too much flow leads to early cardiac failure, too little flow leads to significant cyanosis and balanced pulmonary blood flow to the systemic blood flow allows relatively symptom-free growth. Early after the birth, most patients will have minimal symptomatic with mild cyanosis and almost always unrestrictive VSD. APVR drops after birth. Some patients will develop heart failure due to excessive PBF and others will become cyanotic with MAPCA collaterals tend to develop stenosis over time. Those with valvular atresia with little collateralization tend to be severely cyanotic initially 
pulse oximetry often symbolize well developed collateral system where those with the oxygen saturation drops 70 to 80 percent are manifesting inadequate collateral supply or pulmonary vascular arborization. It's a rare complex lesion with a, a great morphological variability, tetralogy of fellow like intracardiac morphology and pulmonary valvetresia and highly variable pulmonary artery morphology. And this is the diagrammatic representation. It can have P, uh, PDA and the variability of the um, Major aortopulmonary collaterals depends on the number, origin, size, distribution, and connection to the main pulmonary artery. PDA and major aortopulmonary collaterals may be present in the same patient, and rarely PDA and major aortopulmonary collaterals coexist in the same lung. Major uh, aortopulmonary collaterals are systemic to pulmonary uh, collaterals and uh, there could be bronchial systemic or persistent segmental artery. Histologically, they are similar to systemic arteries and they demonstrate reactivity and they are prone to stenosis. The pulmonary atresia with PA configuration could be confluent PAs, uh, PAs diminutive or absent PAs. Atresia with confluent PAs, uh, PAs. This is atresia of the pulmonary valve confluence with both left and right pulmonary artery and blood supply to PA is form of PDA. This is the anatomy of the pulmonary atresia with intact ventricular septum. With ventricular septum diff this pulmonary blood supplying in the pulmonary atresia with ventricular septal defect and the PDA is intact. Pulmonary atresia with diminutive PAs, atresia of the pulmonary valve, both left and right PAs are diminutive but are still present and PA connect to variable number of bronchopulmonary segments and the majority of the pulmonary blood flow is supplied through uh, uh, the major aortopulmonary collaterals. Tiny confluent central pulmonary arteries with more extensive major aortopulmonary collaterals can be seen here. Pulmonary atresia with absent PAs, atresia of the pulmonary valve, no main PA, no right or left PAs, all pulmonary blood flow is supplied via major aortopulmonary collaterals. Absent uh, in this diagram, you can see absent central pulmonary arteries with several large major aortopulmonary collaterals seen. All the pulmonary blood flow is derived from systemic circulation and the pulmonary and systemic saturation would be equal, may have the signs under the circulation over the circulation of pulmonary blood flow. We also have the signs of both under circulation and over circulation in the same patient due to various sources of PBF to different areas of the lung. Saturation is more than 85% indicate QPQS of 2 is to 1. Saturation uh, in the 70s indicate QPQS of 1 or less. High oxygen saturation may indicate pulmonary over circulation and eventual CHF decreasing the sets of neonatal period may indicate ductal closure. Problem over time is stenosis. So major aortopulmonary collaterals are prone to stenosis. Studies show anywhere from 40 to 70 percent develop stenosis, and stenosis may be in one vessel or many, and likely to require catheter intervention. Common areas of stenosis at the time of aortic insertion, at the site of uh, intrapulmonary anastomosis. Pulmonary hypertension could happen with large collaterals, no protective stenosis, and is under high pressure. 
one must uh, know the anatomy of the patient or the pulmonary blood supply to understand the physiology and the, will the patient desaturate or will the patient develop symptoms of heart failure. The more um, major aortopulmonary collaterals the patient has, the more variability and there will be in the PBF and most patients will need a surgical palliation or repair within the first few months of life, uh, depending on the source of the pulmonary blood flow. Due to advancement in ultrasound and fetal technology, the fetal diagnosis of retrology of fellow and PA may to be established as early as 18 weeks of gestation. The chest x-ray often will show the bush-shaped heart consistent with tetralogy of fellow depending on the adequacy of the blood flow to the pulmonary vascular blood bed. One may see areas of hyperperfusion and pulmonary edema on chest x-ray. Once born, diagnosis often is strongly suggested by echocardiography with confirmation often made by cardiac catheterization and CT angiography. The catheterization also helps determine the individual pulmonary artery pressure within each um, major aortopulmonary collateral, thereby providing data on the vessel stenosis and distal vascular branches. More recently, the patient undergoes 3D imaging studies such as MRI, helical CT, and electron beam CT to further delineate the complex pulmonary arteries, arborization of the major aortopulmonary collaterals, uh, which are crucial for pre-surgical planning. Initial medical management consists of optimizing pulmonic blood flow and this may require PGE to keep the ductus like collateral open or to control ventilation to limit over circulation. The supportive measures may include the volume overloading in order to maintain the preload and utilizing vasopressors such as phenylephrine or norepinephrine to increase the systemic vascular resistance and promote shunting via the small narrowed uh, major aortopulmonary collaterals. Some centers may also utilize the blood transfusion to maintain the hematocrit of 40 in order to maximize the oxygen delivering capacity. ACE inhibitors and diuretics can be temporizing for those with excessive blood flow to avoid pulmonary edema and heart failure. Cardiac catheterization can also be used uh, for therapeutic purposes such as the coil occlusion of duplicate excessive collaterals or the balloon dilation of the stenting and narrowed collateral vessels. Once the infant is stabilized, the corrective surgery is optimally performed with the first three to six months of life. Earlier repair is occasionally indicated by unremitting heart failure, excessive flow to one lung and narrowing of uh, major aortopulmonary collaterals to the, either, to the other. The kit for managing these ch children is to provide adequate blood flow to the large pulmonary bed as possible. In doing this, one o o avoids the permanent damage to the large areas of the lung overperfuse from birth. The goal of the surgery is to establish the complete separate anatomy and systemic circulation. This is often accomplished by median stenotomy. A clamshell incision may be used to those with prior surgical interventions such as central shunt, placement of exhaustive and multiple pulmonary collateral beds the surgical planning and management are individually tailored with arborization of the pulmonary bed through and collateral amount of source with pulmonic blood flow age of the patient. The objective of surgery are to unifocalize the pulmonary artery and the major aortopulmonary collaterals complex close to the septal defect and reconstruct the right ventricular outflow tract RVOT. Unifocalization involves the ligation of the aberrant pulmonary collaterals with anastomosis of the native pulmonic arterial supply to the end-to-side or side-to-side -side fashion, creating an anatomically normal appearing pulmonary artery bed if possible. Although previously performed in sequential operation today, many cases are performed using the single-stage bilateral unifocalization procedure. Although most intracardiac VSDs are closed using during the index procedure, the timing of the VSD repair can be challenging as the surgeon must ensure the adequate pulmonary artery bed capacity to handle the complete cardiac output. If concerns exist, the created pulmonary vascular bed will be marginal and inadequate. VSD closure might be delayed or 
or fenestrated. At times, the VSD uh, closure may be delayed to promote the further pulmonary artery maturation and growth. Intraoperative pulmonary artery pressure monitoring is adjunct. Mean pressure is less than 25 millimeters of mercury with some percentage of systemic pressure suggesting safe VSD closure. Similar pressure of more than 25 or high percentage of systemic pressure may suggest a central shunt or restrictive RV to PA conduit is a better surgical strategy. The RV to PA continuity is re-established with pulmonic homograft or conduit. Timing of the surgical treatment, the larger caliber um, major aortopulmonary shunt without significant segmental level, single stage repair is generally performed with one stage unifocalization. A small to moderate caliber without significant stenosis. Initial uh, unifocalization with creation of shunt between the aorta and new pulmonary artery initially performed. Dual supply with multiple small true pulmonary arteries and multiple aortopulmonary uh, collaterals. Uh, these patients are special subjects and are often have dual blood supply to the lung. Extensive small stenotic uh, multiple aortopulmonary collaterals, multiple stage unilateral unifocalization procedures may be needed. A modified blood log toxic shunt is commonly used with the subsequent intracardiac repair pending clinical course and further imaging and or catheterization results. Without invasive treatment, the mortality remains high for the patient with these conditions and less than 50% of the patient will survive beyond TUS without intervention. Without such treatment, patient may experience progressively worsening cyanosis or develop complications such as a congestive heart failure and the pulmonary vascular disease. However, the surgery survival rate continues to improve with a variety of successful strategies depending on the clinical presentation and the current 5-year survival rate is roughly 80 to 50%. And one such study eliminates estimates 75% survival rates and 14 years of age. Thank you.